Most higher level languages like JavaScript, Python, Ruby, etc. hide the memory layout details from the developer. You don't think about how data is placed in memory and the runtime really just takes care of it for you. But in system level languages like Zig, C, Rust, the way that data is stored in memory actually matters. It affects performance, correctness, and how your code interacts with the outside world, such as files, networks, or C libraries. Uh, today, I want to talk about struct alignment and packing, why they exist, and how different languages can let you kind of control them. Okay, so let's take a look at uh, essentially a struct that would be storing like a U8, and um, we're going to use these to represent the bytes of memory that are available to the struct. Uh, we only have eight bytes in this example, but you know, your struct can have more depending on how much stuff you shove in your struct. So in our case, we have a struct, we have eight bytes of memory we're working with, and we want to store a U8. A U8 is only going to take one byte, so it makes sense that it would go into this spot. Totally makes sense, right? So maybe that's field A, and we want to add field B. Field B is going to be a U32. So you might think that a U32 would go in these spots. And um, it, it could, uh, but that's invalid in so many cases. And you might be wondering, well, hang on, if A is a U8 and it's the first thing in the struct, and then B is a U32 and it's the next thing in the struct, why is that not working? Uh, well, so we have a concept known as padding. So what this looks like in reality is we have our U8, which takes up the first byte, and then we have three bytes of padding, and then our U32 would take place. Now, there are tools and languages and, uh, well, the languages that we're talking about today, some of them will even help you reorder this. So what you would get is the U32 on the left and then the U8 on the right. So it would end up taking up five because we wouldn't have to pad the U32. Uh, wish, <laughs> thanks Canva. Um, okay, so we wouldn't have to pad the U32. Let's see if we can just get back to this so it's a little easier to see. Uh, and the reason this works is that your processor is expecting things to be at offsets of their byte value. So if a U32 takes up four bytes, the address that it is expecting it to be at is divisible by four. Um, and the same thing with like U8s, well, that's a one byte, so it's divisible by one. So U8s in our case are very, very flexible. And um, yeah, so if we were to reorder this, maybe the U32s would be the first four, and then the U8 would be the next one, and then, you know, we would take up essentially five pieces of space. Uh, okay, so... How do programming languages help us with this? I've got a couple different examples up here. Uh, I'm going to make this legible for you all. And we're going to pull up some code examples and we're going to run some code examples. Uh, so what I've got first, we're going to talk about Zig. So I've got a really simple example here. This is kind of following what I was showing earlier. So we have a U8, a U32, and then a U16. We also have... Example two, which is the exact same struct, except it's packed. So what does packed mean? So if we go back to our example here, packed would say, hey, I understand that I am supposed to follow these instructions, these rules for my CPU architecture, and I know that I can seg fault or I can run into all sorts of issues if I don't. But for whatever reason, I am choosing to pack these manually. So if you specify a packed struct in Zig, what you would get is you have no gaps here and you would have a U8 and then your U32s would start like so. So what's interesting is if you don't pack your struct, Zig will help optimize this for you to make sure that you're not doing anything illegal. Um, but if you do choose to pack a struct, you are in full control of how those bytes are ordered in memory. So our pack struct is kind of interesting. So in our case, we would have something like this we would have our first byte is our U8, and then we would have no padding. We would have four bytes for U32, and then we would have no padding, and then we would have our U16. 
So just something to be aware of if you pack your structs like so. And then uh, we have some debug prints here where I have the size and the alignment. So we're using the size of built in and the align of built in to get the size of and the alignment respectively. And we'll give this a run. So if I do zig build run, if I type build correctly, you can see that the size is eight and the alignment of the first one is four, but the packed one has an alignment of eight and the size is also eight. So again, just taking a look at this, what we're seeing here is that the alignment of the first one is the size of the biggest member of the struct. So in our case, the alignment is four bytes uh, because it's a U32 and that's the biggest member of the struct. But if we look at the other one, the alignment is all eight bytes because we are doing no padding. And then just to clarify, uh, I probably should have mentioned this, but this is one byte, the U8, the 32 is four bytes, and the U16 is two bytes. Okay, so you can use essentially the packed keyword uh, on your struct to say, let me control the memory layout of this. I know what I'm doing. And for whatever reason, um, you know, you may choose to do that, but just be aware that if you set up something illegal for the architecture that you're building for and you try to like dereference that struct and start um, doing things like pointer cast or uh, well, really a lot of different things. You can find yourself in a, a really dangerous spot with like seg faults. Um, so just something to be aware of. So let's take a look at another example. So I've got several for you. Uh, so if we look at C, for example, we can kind of see the same thing. So C has the ability to pack as well. So you can see we're using the pragma keyword here to um, indicate that we are wanting to pack this, um, some information on how it should be packed. And then you can see the size of the regular struct, the pack struct, and then we have like some offsets. So if I were to run this uh, with like GCC source packed, this will give me what a dot out. Uh, yeah, a dot out. So if we run this, you can see that the regular has a size of 12, the packed has a size of seven. So it is packed, no offsetting. Um, and then you can see the offset bytes too. So the regular one has an offset of four, but the packed has an offset of one. Uh, okay, so let's keep going, right? So what does this look like in maybe Rust? So if we take a look at packing, if I type correctly, uh, we can do something similar in Rust, but really to get a handle on this, my understanding, and I'm not a Rust expert uh, or a C expert or a Zig expert for that matter, I guess I should say, um, <laughs> is uh, that to do this, you're, you're needing to use this repr macro uh, to change how this is represented from a C level structure. structure. So um, in our case, we have our regular example. We also have our packed example. We're using the packed keyword here. Uh, and then you can see down here, what we've got is um, just print lines. We have uh, the packed version and the regular version um, inversely, sorry. So the regular version first and the packed version. And then there's a little bit of uh, working with read unaligned on the packed version to do an unaligned read. So reading something that is not at the normal divisible address that it would be expected to be at due to us packing it. So if we actually run this with uh, Rust C and we do packed.rs, we'll actually run into an issue, which is kind of interesting. Um, I should have tested this before uh, starting this video, but it is what it is. And uh, what you can see here is the reference to the packed field is unaligned. So it tells you that pack structs are only aligned by one byte. Many modern architectures penalize unaligned field accesses, which we sort of talked about with seg faults, but also worth mentioning some architectures will allow you to do unaligned accesses um, without seg faulting, but there's just a performance hit in doing so. Uh, so they have some information on how to do this, which is copy the field contents to a local variable or replace the reference with a raw pointer and use read unaligned, write unaligned, uh, which is what we're doing. And it tells you loads and stores via star P, must be properly aligned even when using raw pointers. Um, what's actually really cool about this that I was unaware of is that if you take this error and pass this to Rust C and say explain, it'll give you a ton of information on this. So unaligned references to a field of pack struct got created. So it's got an example of erroneous code. Uh, information on like what the issue is, um, some examples of potential fixes, and then additional information, and then a link to the issue. This is actually really nice. Uh, so I... Uh, 
am kind of happy that I stumbled on that, but let's fix that issue too really quick and then we'll run it again. So I've got packed RS and what I need to do in this step would be to take the raw pointer. So I'm gonna say let be PTR uh, should be like a const U32. And this will be another unsafe, which will be um, at p.b as const u32. And I think that should take care of it. Oh, uh, not sure why I said that would take care of it without us actually using that value. So we have standard pointer and we want to pass in b ptr. And let's give this a shot. Looks like that still didn't quite take care of it. So I think what we need to do is do unsafe uh, standard pointer address of. Sorry, I am cross referencing the Rust C examples as we go, just to make sure that I have this correct. Uh, yeah, this is what we want. So I'm just going to grab this, hop back over, and then we can just paste that here. And this is p.b. Extra semicolon right there. Okay, cool. Uh, we have an extra warning, so let's just remove that too. Sorry, I am uh, really not a Rust expert, but that's something I'm working on changing. So hopefully if I decide to keep showing more Rust examples as we go, it won't be so um, all over the place. Okay, so that gives us packed. So if we run packed, you can see again, very similarly, we have regular, size 12, align 4, and then the packed, size 7, and the alignment of 1. One thing you've noticed, hopefully, is that the alignment of the pack structs is always 1, uh, which, you know, makes sense given that we have no padding or anything. Um, but just something to be aware of when you're working with pack structs, that alignment is also going to be 1. So I have one more example, which I think is kind of interesting. So I, I do a lot of Go. Um, so... There is also a packed.go version here, but it's worth mentioning that you don't actually have like a packed keyword or a way to essentially pack those structs. So what you have to do instead is you can reorder the fields or manually encode the bytes. And again, Go is gonna help you take care of this. So just something to be aware of. Um, you're essentially working with the compiler. So we have two examples here. I've got a regular struct, which kind of has things out of order. And then I've got a compact struct, which has our U32s, our U16s, and our U8s. And then just to reiterate, if you haven't caught on yet, when you're thinking about memory setup in your structs, if your compiler is not taking care of it for you for whatever reason, um, in terms of alignment, it is generally a good idea to go from the biggest alignment items to the lowest alignment items. So you can see here, we have a U32, U16, and then a U8. Okay, so there's the Go code. Really not much going on. But if I go run source packed.go, you can see here that we have a regular size of 12 and then our compact size of 8, which is really interesting because Go is actually not doing anything for us in that case. So one of the things that I think is neat is that even if you're a Go dev um, and you're not able to like manually pack structs with a, a packed keyword uh, or really control things on that low of a level, one of the things you could think about is, am I really setting up my struct in a way where it is uh, optimizing for the amount of space that it takes up? So um, yeah, I know that the Go one's a bit of a strange example, but hopefully that is helpful or clear. So some practical guidelines to think about, um, prefer field reordering to shrink the struct size. Like I just mentioned, it, it, the Go example is a really great uh, example of that. Um, and it's generally, it's gonna be safe and portable. So you don't have to worry about in, getting into unsafe territory by manually packing or anything like that. It's nice and easy and uh, I would start there. You can use pack structs uh, if you are working on wire or disk layouts where the um, alignment is already specified. 
And then you can always copy values into aligned locals before working with them. Uh, you should also probably be aware of your target CPU. So x86 tolerates unaligned access and it's slower, but uh, many ARM or MIPS chips tend to crash. Um, and then for foreign function interfacing, uh, you need to match your C layouts. So uh, we showed off the repr uh, macro, R-E-P-R, um, in Rust, and then the packed keyword in Zig to help you have control over that. And then in Go, you could do field ordering, but uh, the the C-Go is helping take care of much, much of that for you. So I wouldn't worry too much about it from the Go side. Some key things to remember, structs are often larger than the sum of their fields uh, because of the alignment rules. Padding ensures that fields start at memory addresses that are addressable by the CPU. And then you can also control the size with reordering or packing. But packing trades those safety and performance guarantees for exactness. My suggestion would really be only use packing when you need to. So if you're worried about like serialization or foreign function interfaces um, and not general computation, it seems to be uh, not necessarily a foot gun, but it's, it's an advanced feature that is easy to cause more pain than optimize for. I think that covers it. Again, I'm not an expert in really any of the languages that we talked about today, except maybe, maybe go. I'd give myself some credit there. And um, i am never had to worry about packing or alignment with higher level languages. So uh, if I said something off, please let me know in the comments below. I would love to have any corrections and make sure that I'm making and make sure that I'm teaching things the way that they're intended to be taught. That makes sense and aren't uh, misteachings. Um, outside of that, if you haven't yet and you appreciated the video, give it a thumbs up. That helps me. I'd like to think that helping me helps you. And it's just a wonderful wheel of time, I guess. Um, also consider subscribing to the channel and joining the discord in the description below. I think that's it. So thank you very much and have a great day.